There's this picture that keeps going around Twitter and it's of Nara Smith and the ballerina farm family. And it's like Trad is so in right now. And the replies to this have been so funny. Everything from is the Trad in the room with us right now. Both of these women make seven figure salaries. If Trad means having a gay husband, then I guess so. And I think it's very interesting this kind of aesthetic of a Trad wife that's become a trend and how it's very misleading because often a lot of this content and these influencers and even, you know, to a certain level they kind of become actual celebrities who are promoting a lifestyle of a trad, you know, just a traditional quote unquote lifestyle. You're not actually doing that because this is literally your business. This is an aesthetic. A lot of these women are selling courses on how to be a trad wife. So like they're generating a business, you know, they are making an income, which is not traditional at all. Women weren't even allowed to have our own bank accounts until like 1974. Especially in our current political climate and with things such as Roe v. Wade being revoked and just all these really, you know, political extremists who are basically like fundamentalists. They literally want The Handmaid's Tale, you know, to become the reality of the United States. So it's a little dangerous, I think, to promote this. And I think it's especially important to remember the reality of what it was actually like to be a trad wife, you know, back in the 1950s when we literally weren't given a choice. It's very easy for people to forget how recent so many things were, you know, when it comes to women's rights, when it comes to rights for people of color, you know, like the civil rights movement. None of that was really that long ago. And it's very easy to think of it as just being so far back in history because, you know, when we're in school, we read these textbooks and sometimes it's like black and white photos. But in the 1950s, you know, a lot of women were put under medication. They were getting lobotomies because they were so depressed and lonely. And, you know, it's sold to us through these images and you know even those vintage images of like the perfect little family and they're always like white and like they always look a very certain way and like oh my god this is like what happiness is this is the american dream the reality of it was never really talked about like mental health even like the stress that husbands would be under being alcoholics domestic violence um financial stress none of these things are ever portrayed you know in you know, in the vintage examples, and then also even now, people who actually truly benefit from this are the super, you know, wealthy people that are able to hire out help. So like the wife that has a full-time nanny, um, a chef, you know, if we're really throwing it back, like a butler, like do people still, <laughs> I'm sure people still have butlers. A gardener, a maid, like someone to do the laundry, all of these things because just doing all of those things by yourself is exhausting it goes unnoticed it's just kind of expected of you so it's not really appreciated you know in the family unit and in society i recently saw the david chase the creator of the sopranos documentary it's a two-part series on hbo max if you're a fan of the sopranos i would definitely recommend it or even if you're just interested in you know behind the scenes of film production and stuff. It was so interesting. I love The Sopranos. And they brought up this scene from the show. Um, it's like Carmela and Tony's ultimate showdown. But she finds out that he's been cheating on her again. And they have this like huge fight. And she admits to him that she's like been in love with this other guy for months and it's like shocking. It's kind of like honestly scary, bro. Like the acting in that scene is so good. It's so fucked because he's like, yeah, well, you know, you asked me what does she have that you don't and she actually has a brain. I can actually talk to her about stuff. And she is just so rightfully so hurt by that. And she's like, I have a brain. I'm right here. Like, why don't you talk to me? And he's like, oh yeah, because you're always bitching at me to fix this or do that or like whatever and she's like well who wanted it that way so a lot of men like that that want a more traditional wife um you know one who stays home takes care of the house takes care of the kids they don't want you to have your own interests or career or really even hobbies because that will take away from the role that you serve and so that's why it's very important to you know especially with all this sprinkle sprinkle stuff and all that it's like important to not fall in the mindset of being financially reliant on a man and being with a man who's like yeah i just want you to stay home but they really mean that they want you to do all the domestic 
unpaid labor for them and it's like oh yeah well I'm the provider I get to leave the house and have my own life and make money and it's like well I get to do that because I have a job like you don't like they'll use it against you a lot of men will so you know it's fine to want a man that's a provider and I think you should you know but it's always important to have your own life and your own source of income and your own bank account even if you get married and to always have a backup plan and just not even necessarily I mean obviously if something were to happen in your relationship or in your marriage but also just to remain sane and whole within yourself you know you just hear so many women who lose themselves in you know just that life of being a wife and a mother and they lose all other forms of identity you know not really on purpose it could be the most fulfilling thing to you but all of that is going to change at some point the kids are going to grow up your relationship's going to change and it's very easy to think well that's not going to happen to me that's not going to happen to me but that's the case in a lot of instances and i think at the same time it is talked about a lot more but i think a lot of women also don't want to talk about it because it's like damn like i did everything right and i'm still not fulfilled i'm still unhappy i'm like there, i think there's probably a lot of shame that also goes into that a lot of people probably don't even want to talk about that you know that's why you really have to be selective of who you date who you marry um because it's just very easy to be taken for granted and that's why it's also very important to not do those quote unquote wifely <laughs> trod wife things no but like cooking and cleaning for your boyfriend or someone your like your situationship you don't want to be of service of service of service expecting you're going to get that in return just literally think of jersey shore when they would have girls come over that would start doing their dishes for them they were like oh we love this shit but it's not like they're saying that out of respect for the girls or because they like the girls you know you don't want to be that bitch I always tell you all this, you don't want to be the girl on the phone that's like, oh, well, she'll come over and she'll clean the whole house and take care of me and then I'll send her on her way. You know, like, you don't want to be that girl. And again, I think a lot of girls do that just because they don't know any better and they think, well, I like this guy. Like, I want to show him that I like him by doing things, like being of service to him, like showing him that I like him. But no, men like when you're like unreachable to them. Like, what's with that? They'll respect you so much more when you like cuss them out, tell them no, walk away don't talk to them for a few days like and it's also the whole like madonna whore thing you know especially using the sopranos as the example it's like well i'm gonna have my wife and this is just so true this is like the whole trad wife thing bro like these guys I have my wife who you know i'm with publicly because they look good they're not going to embarrass me they're wholesome they'll take care of you know the kids and like fill that role and then i'm gonna have all my whores on the side that are gonna play their role but you would never really like mix the two. I mean, that does happen, you know, where the mistress becomes the main bitch. But, you know, just generally speaking, 